all. This is Katarina. And I am Jeff. And we're from Narwhal. And today we'll talk to you about an ex. This is Jeff. He's the co-founder of Narwhal and he's a farmer of pigs, chickens and humans. You can follow him on Twitter at Jeff B. Cross. And this is Katarina, a fellow Narwhalian, and she's part of the NX Core team, a GDE for Angular, Maps, and Web. And she co-founded the Angular Athens Meetup. She's also a prolific speaker and instructor. And a little known fact is she also gives great walking tours of Athens if you're ever in the area. You can follow her at, at CyberCity on Twitter or visit her site at cyber.city to learn all about sea monsters and everything else she's doing. And collectively, the two of us are known as BF Jeff. Before we dive into our talk, we have a couple of what if questions we'd like to get on your mind. What if you could do a fresh checkout of your workspace and have the app running in a few seconds? What if you could look forward to writing e tweet tests? And finally, what if your PRs could be validated in CI instantly? How would that change how your team writes software? Would more features get done in a sprint? Would products get to market faster? Well, NX is the tool that will help bring all those what ifs to life. But why should you use NX in the first place? I guess you're thinking, I already use the Angular CLI. Why would I need another tool for building or testing? Is there indeed so much added value? And to top that, you're thinking, besides, I don't even work on a monorepo. This is what an X is for, right? Well, we hope we will answer both your questions today and we will crush all these doubts. In this presentation, we'll see how NX will make your team happy and your builds fast. First, we'll look at all the modern tools that NX supports and offers, and then we'll talk about how NX builds applications. Let's start by looking at the modern tools that NX offers. NX offers support for all modern tools out there, like ESLint, Cypress, Jest, Storybook, and Prettier. As you might know, TSLint has been deprecated. So now the TypeScript community has standardized on ESLint with the TypeScript ESLint plugin. With NX, you can choose to, whether to use legacy TSLint or to use newly supported ESLint. This is all thanks to the contributions of James Henry and many other folks who worked on the TypeScript ESLint package. So thank you very much. NX also supports Cypress. Cypress is an e tweet test runner built for modern web. It has a lot of great features like time travel, real-time reloads, automatic waiting, screenshots and videos, and more. By default, when creating a new front-end application, NX will use Cypress to create the e test project. Cypress will run in headed mode by default, but you can also run your test in headless mode. Videos and screenshots will be available for debugging in both cases. In headless mode, your test will be rerun every time you make a change to your application code by providing the watch flag. Run your tweet tests against the production build, and of course, you can run your tests on CI as well. You can specify a custom URL to test, you can take advantage of Cypress code completion thanks to TypeScript, and in general, you can customize your Cypress configuration however you need by modifying your Cypress JSON file as you would normally do. Jest is now NX's default unit test runner for front-end applications. We added Jest support a couple of year goes, years ago because Jest was fast. It's fast to write tests and fast to run them, and it's fun. The developer ergonomics are great for writing tests with Jest. So, uh, some even look forward to writing tests with it. But more importantly, Jest has a thriving community with a well-maintained project, which is really important for, for sustainability of any large code base. Storybook is an environment for developing UI components in isolation. It allows you to browse a component library, view the different states of its component, and interactively develop and test components. And this is super useful, especially if you're in a large team or organization with shared libraries. With the NX Storybook plugin, you can generate Storybook configurations for individual projects, be it apps or libraries. And you can do so using either Angular or React. When generating a storybook configuration, you also get the option to set up an e tweet Cypress app that is configured to run against the project's storybook instance. With an axe, you can build, serve, and watch for changes to your stories. 
LNX also helps you migrate from previous versions of Storybook. And the command to generate the Storybook configuration for Angular, for example, is the one provided in this sample, nxg at narwhal slash angular, colon storybook configuration, and then your project's name. NX sets up prettier configuration for you, so your developers don't need to worry about code formatting, they can focus on more interesting problems. But not only does NX set up the configuration for you, it also, through the CLI, allows you to format only files that have changed between commits so that you can gradually improve the formatting of your code base. And now, it's demo time! Let's see the command to create an NX workspace. It's npx create an X workspace and then the name of the workspace. You can add some flags to pre-fill some of the options, but you can also run just npx create an X workspace and an interactive wizard will show up in your console. Now let's go in the console and type npx create an X workspace and see what will happen. First of all, it asks us to give our workspace name. So let's give the name my workspace. Then it will ask us what we want to create in the new workspace. We can create an empty workspace with a layout that works best for building apps. Or we can create a workspace with a single React application, or a workspace with a single Angular application, or a workspace with a single Next.js application, or a Nest application, or even a workspace with a single app built for using web components. But we can also create a workspace with a full stack application using React and Express, or a full stack application using Angular and Nest, or an empty workspace with a layout that works best for open source projects. We can also create an empty workspace, and yeah, this is the beginning of the list. <laughs> So let's go ahead and create a workspace with a single Angular application. Let's see the options we get, the application name. Let's give the name demo app. Then let's choose the default style sheet format, we'll use SAS. And default linter, the ESLint. And yes, we want to use Annex Cloud because it's free, it doesn't require registration, and it gives us faster builds, run details, and GitHub integration. It's a no-brainer, right? So let's go. So now that the command finished running, let's go to Visual Studio Code and see what our command generated. So we see that generated an apps folder. And inside the apps folder, we have the demo app. And we also have inside the demo app, we just have a proper Angular application with our app module and our app component. And then we have also a demo app E2E, which is the Cypress app that goes with our demo app. Also, we have a libraries folder, which is empty at the moment, but we will generate a library. We have a tools folder which has the schematics where we can add our custom schematics in it, in this folder. And let's see, we have our usual Angular JSON. And we also have our NX JSON and some presets for Jest and other configuration files. So, as promised, let's take a look at the NX examples repository, which showcases all of the features that we talked about before. You can find it at this address on GitHub, narwhal slash NX examples. So let's take a look what we have here. We have the NX examples folder, which has inside an, uh, the apps uh, folder, which has a cart application with its E3 tests and the cart application, we can see that it's a React application. It also has a products application, which as we can see is an Angular application. And it also has some libraries. It has a, the cart library, which has inside some parts of the cart application. And it has a products library, which again has some parts of the, of the products application which we'll see in action in the browser. And it also has a shared library. In the shared library, it has some shared UI components that 
are used by both of the applications, like the header, which we will see is written in JSX, and some other uh, utility libraries that like the JSXify. And if we take a look, it also has a library for state management, which uses NGRX. And then it has some other UI elements. So let's take a look. What do we see when we run the application? To serve first the cart application, we can do edX serve cart. And it will just run our local server. And we can see the application running, the cart application running in 4200 port. We can see the header here. Now, let's take a look what happens when we serve the products application. And we refresh here, we see our products and again, the same header. As we said, the products application, uh, the cards application is a React application and the products application is an Angular application but the NX header that we saw, the shared header, is written in JSX, but it's exported and we can see that we can import the same element like this in both our Angular application and our React application. And it's imported like this. Another interesting thing to see is that some of our applications, for example, all the applications that go in the cart, all the libraries that go in the carts application are written in React, just like our cart application and the libraries that the UI libraries that go in the products are usually written in Angular. But as we saw, we can have the shared libraries that are written, for example, in JSX. And let's take a look what happens when we run the dependency graph. So the dependency graph for our application looks like this. Pretty more complete than the one we saw in the example application before, right? So we can see that the shared header, for example, which is used both by the products and cart, both the products and the cart application depend on the shared header. Again, the two tests, of course, depend on their applications and we can see all the other uh, dependencies that we have here. For example, the shared header use, is using the JSX file library, so it depends on this, and so does this UI library here. So in this nice way, we can see the whole dependence graph. We can choose to only see one application, or we can group by folder. Now, let's see we talked about the affected command. Now, let's change something. Let's go ahead and change something in our header element. For example, let's change the background color from blue and make it red and save. Now, if we go and run NX affected depth graph, the depth graph will show us only these, uh, these parts of our project which were affected by our change. Our change was in shared header and both the cars application and the products application depend on the shared header. But the three applications for cart and products depend on car the carts and products app respectively. So if we were to rebuild, retest or rerun, these parts of the code that were affected would have to do the same thing again, would have to retest or rebuild. So this dependency graph helps us understand a little bit better. If we show the whole cart, again, it will show us in red the parts that were affected and we will have a general better understanding of how our whole code base is affected when we change some small thing. Now. Let's see how an X makes builds fast. Let's break down an example of a single app composed of many libraries to see how an X uses intelligent analysis of a code change and know what projects can be affected by that change. Let's think of a customer service portal with these pages, a knowledge base, a page for support tickets and a live chat. And let's say there is also a new ticket. 
This is one app, but we can partition it into several libraries that compose the app. And each section of the app can have its own features, which can be separated into even more libraries. For example, the new ticket feature is the screen where tickets are created. And since those sections and features of the app will definitely share some components and utilities, we can extrapolate more libraries, such as a design system and some utilities for communicating with the backend. In a real app, there would be many more ways to partition and share functionality between libraries, but let's keep it simple. Now let's consider Lifecycle when a developer on the team wants to change the layout of the new ticket UI. They would make the change inside the feature library and then open a pull request. Uh, if your CI tooling doesn't understand what changed and what the impact of that change might be, naturally it will build everything again just to be safe. So as your project grows in scope, if CI is building everything all the time, that leads to the CI time growing along with the, the number of projects in your repository. So if we put that on a graph, we can see that uh, the full time it takes to run CI is really a factor of how many projects and how long each of those projects takes to build, represented by these colored bars here. But with NX, we're smart about, about knowing what you've changed and what could be affected by that change. Since NX maintains its own dependency graph or project graph underneath, it can look at what you've actually changed between one branch to another and determine what's, what's changed in that, but also what's affected by that change. And so NX can use that to be more intelligent about the commands that it can run. So here we can see that NX knows that we've changed the new ticket library. And since the support tickets feature depends on new ticket and the customer service app depends on support tickets, it knows that customer service app and support tickets can be affected by this change. And so it needs to revalidate those by running their own tests, their own end-to-end -end tests and, and um, whatever, whatever other tasks could be affected by this change. So since we can build only what's affected, we can see that our total CI time still is a matter of the projects being built and how long they take, but we're building fewer projects because we, don't, we know that some of the projects are not affected by this change. So then if we compare to the original CI time, we can see quite a bit of savings. But we can do even better. Since NX is able to parallelize tasks, you can run all three project tasks in parallel so that your CI time now becomes only as long as the longest project task in your workspace. Quite, quite an improvement just from knowing what's affected by a change. Even though we're able to rebuild only three of these projects, those projects depend on unaffected projects. By default, each affected project will pull in the sources of its dependencies to build from scratch but NX now supports the ability for libraries to be built independently and consumers will consume the packaged library instead of sources. This allows what we call incremental building. Incremental building really becomes powerful when you can cache and reuse the packaged libraries. So if I build and test the new ticket library in CI and the design system and validators libraries have already been built and cast in CI's local cache, the builder can just build the source code inside the new ticket library without having to rebuild the source code from validators and design system. So let's take a look at this example of building times for the three parts of the project. If a dependency of the target has been built, the build doesn't need to be totally fresh, so each individual part can use the cache to save building time. If we put the affected and parallel functionalities in action, together with the incremental cache, our build time is practically reduced to a quarter of the initial. Let's take a look now from how we started and what we end up with. At each step, our build time is reduced and eventually, with the use of affected and parallel, and then incremental cache, our total CI time is as long as our longest parallel task. So we've seen how local cache can really speed up builds, but here's another what if to consider. 
What if CI and developer computers worked together? What if they could share the work that the others have already done? Well, that's where NX Cloud comes in. NX Cloud takes what was otherwise a local cache isolated to the machine that the task was run on and now pushes it to our cloud and manages it in a way that if somebody runs the same task with similar enough environment, then NX can just grab that result and replay it uh, for other computers on the, on the uh, uh, connected to the cloud. So when NX Cloud is added, we can see those same timings where we were already seeing some, some time savings from cache results improve even more by having more cache hits because the cache results are shared across people on your team and CI environments. And then when we look at the bigger picture and compare it from where we started, we can see that it's really the best case scenario is much, much better than our, our best case scenario with a naive build. It's not uncommon to see 10x build performance improvements in CI plus improvements locally. But it's not one way and not just CI that benefits. Every developer computer and environment in your organization can benefit from being connected to NX Cloud. Beyond the modern tooling and the build optimizations that NX provides, there are so many more things that make it a pleasant tool as part of your tool build. It's integrated with Visual Studio Code through the NX console plugin. We have GitHub integrations with NX Cloud to post reports directly back to your pull requests. Uh, you can extend NX with plugins, and actually everything in NX is built with plugins. We have first-class support for React, Node, and uh, other tools, and, uh, and uh, the community has been building even more plugins. So we hope this presentation has shown you how NX uses modern tools and build optimizations to make happy developers. If you want to learn more, you can go to nx.dev slash modern dash angular. And Katarina and I both thank you for your time. Bye-bye.